Okay. Well, Colton, I appreciate the kind words. Nice to meet you. He's now, snoring. What the fuck? Oh, it's the little papa. <laughs> it's about Mrs. Susan. Amazing. Like I mentioned in the evening. The lady helping my pregnant fiance, Kaylee, and me around the house. We brought her in because she seemed very lonely. She's practically family, living right next to our house. About a week ago, she disappeared. Gone. Not answering calls, missing her usual hours. Disappeared for a week? Okay. Yeah, that's definitely cause for concern. Doesn't sound good. Anything unusual about her behavior before she vanished? Yeah, that's the thing. She started acting strangely, calling us by different names, humming these bizarre tunes. It really freaked out Kayla. She went to stay with her parents for a bit. I couldn't just leave Mrs. Susan alone. I thought maybe it's dementia or something. Can you look into it, Detective? Yes. Oh, and don't worry about Bashka. Bashka. Hopefully, she'll still be sleeping when I get back in a few hours. But I gotta warn you, she can be one noisy little girl sometimes. I understand, Colton. Yeah, I'm now getting that. Ducks, and I'll start an investigation right away. Noisy little snorry you girl. Be with Kaylee. And about the money, don't worry. You'll find Mrs. Susan. She's been like a grandmother to you two, right? Absolutely, Detective. She's been like family. We don't have much, especially after buying this house. But Mrs. Susan mm. means everything to us, you know? Whoa, well, it's fucking windy, dude. It's like a storm out there. Please, give me a call as soon as you find out anything. We're really worried about her. Okay. Dude, this game looks really nice. Like, the graphics and stuff look fucking awesome, man. Oh, this looks good. Wow. The solo dev, man. This looks great. Okay, dude. Open or close the door. Drag the door with the mouse with the right stick of the controller. Okay. This looks great. Look at this. Wow, man. It's like a fucking hurricane out here or some shit. I'm gonna turn on some lights. What the fuck is that, man? Oh, man. That's. that's <laughs> That's fucking creepy. All right, what the hell is down here? Some weird ass screams coming from over here somewhere. Dude, it's so dark. Where's the light switches? Oh my God. Where's the lights, dude? That's fucked up. That is fucked up. Something is not happy. Oh, shit. Okay.
There's no light out in this hallway. Oh, there's one here. Whoa, what's all this? What is all this, man? Get the camera to find a clue to examine it. Hold down the zoom button. Keep in mind that there may be more than one clue on a viewport. What the fuck? How long do I have to wait? Ultrasound of a child. Probably the client's fiance. But why is it written here? How long do I have to wait? Hmm. Yes, yeah, be weird. Truth will Different come. Different date, same ultrasound. This time it says the truth will come out soon. Ah. There's one here. I have a feeling this case is closely tied to the client's fiance. Okay. Whatever you say, man. Interesting. Make your home among friends. Yeah, do that. See a lot of these little fucking toys getting around everywhere, dude. Rabitsky. Oh shit. Okay. Whatever it is sounds pretty fucking close, dude. Like it's in this room here. Oh god. The alpha. What is this? Nice little painting, that's cute. That's nice. Not now. What do you mean? Could be important. What is that? Okay. I can relate. It's so hard to be young these days. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, this is weird. <laughs> um. I hope everything works out for them. Can't really look at anything else. This is weird. Can I look at this stuff? No? Shit. Oh, wall, what's that? the child victim god please no some weird shit man These drawings are unsettling just a little bit what's that they have a child they didn't tell me about interesting hmm okay Dude, it's so fucking dark. Where's the light switch? Oh god, where is the light switch? It's so dark. It's beyond dark. Oh my god. Oh, here we go. Oh, little symbols on it. Weird symbol. I wonder if it could relate to the case. Probably, dude. The same symbol. Any other weird shit in here? No? Okay. Oh. Coming from like down here now? The fuck? 
It seems like it's back up there. What is going on? This thing, oh. This thing like moves all over the place, dude. What the fuck? Probably some weird shit going on. Oh, Papa. That's a good Papa, man. The good Papa there. Hello? No fucking way. If I have to chase down a password for another two hours again, I'm out. Oh, God. Hey, Kaylee, if you forgot your computer password for the hundredth time, I've scattered your toy figures around the house and I've labeled the boxes with your login and password. First is the Chikensky, then the Kowski, followed by the Rabitsky. Penultimate for login is the Sharkski, and lastly, the Katsky. Fucking what? Password starts with the Fishski, then a Teddy Ski. Then a robot ski. Second to last with a cool ski. And finally a clown ski. Have a blast. What the fuck is that? Who does just send an email, man? What the fuck is this shit? Just spend all goddamn day trying to find a fucking password. Ugh. Three? Cat skis three. Oh my god, dude. Okay, let me... I'm literally writing this down. Whoa, hello. What you doing over there? Damn, dude. Fucking hell. Grandma's got some moves, dude. Chicken ski is eight. I'm literally writing all of these down in my phone right now. Cool ski is one. Rabbit ski is two. Robot ski is four. Good papa. Teddy ski is seven. Oh, fuck. I dropped my phone on the keyboard. <laughs> Fish ski is zero. Clown ski. Five for clown ski. Pretty sure it's a five. Hard to make out, but it's five. All right, man. I think I've worked this out. I think I've worked this out. So it was 89263 for the login. And the password is... Password starts with Fishski, then a Tediski. <laughs> so Fishski is zero. Tediski, seven, zero, seven. Robotski is four. Second to last with a Coolski which is one, and then a clown ski, which is five. So they're the numbers I've used. I couldn't find, I couldn't find the cow ski anywhere. So I just assumed that that's nine because I've basically got every other number except nine. So that would be eight, nine, two, six, three. Let's see if it works. There she is, baby. Is Kaylee home? Have you fixed her cam yet? I was thinking we could have a little, you know, hour time while she's away. Oh, hey, Bella. Hello? Yeah. Kaylee's with her parents tonight. What's up? Why does her face look so Seriously? weird? You sound a bit off, babe. Are you okay? I was really looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's just a bit tired. You know? A little tired. It's been a hectic day. Tired, huh? You sure? You sound like something's up. I'm just tired. I was really hoping you'd come over. What's the deal? Just need a bit of downtime. Mrs. Susan is missing. Mrs. Susan is missing? You're being a bit vague, babe. I was really hoping to spend some alone time with you. No, sorry. It's a real story. Look, it's just not a good night, and I need to take it easy. Can we catch up some other time? Sure, but you're not fooling me. Why are you being so distant? We had plans, and now you're back. I'm busy, now. man. It's not the right time. I promise we'll make up for it. 
I need to go. I catch up later. Kaylee won't be thrilled about this. Bye. Oh shit. Papa? Oh. Rolla. What the fuck is that? Oh god. Back to the internet. Right, back to giggle we go. Uh, crawler. Oh, here we go. Remembering Miss Susan Crawler, a tragic loss sparks a community's reflection on mental health. On July 15th, 2020, the small town of Greenfield, Pennsylvania was rocked by a tragedy that left its residents in shock and mourning. 80-year-old Miss Susan Crawler, a beloved member of the community, had taken her own life by hanging herself from a tree in her backyard. Oh god, maybe that's why she's like floating around everywhere like she's like hanging. Ugh. The news of her passing spread quickly throughout the town, with many struggling to come to terms with the loss of such a cherished member of their community. Miss Crawler was known for her kind heart and generous wow, generosity towards others. She volunteered at the local senior center where she spent countless hours knitting blankets and scarves for those in need. Her neighbors described her as gentle soul who always had a smile on her face and a warm greeting for everyone she encountered. However, despite her outgoing personality and dedication to helping others, Miss Crawler struggled with depression and anxiety for much of her life. She had been receiving treatment for these conditions, but it seems that even with therapy and medication, she could not find peace within herself. In the days following her death, the town came together to honor Miss Crawler's memory. A memorial service was held at the local church where dozens of people gathered to honor Miss Crawler's memory. Uh, fuck, I read the wrong bit. Whoops, my bad. It's all a lot of text. My brain, help. A memorial service was held at the local church where dozens of people gathered to pay tribute to her life. Many spoke of how she, how much she meant to them and how her impact would be felt for years to come. Two years later, the wounds of Miss Crawler's suicide are still roaring in the hearts of those who knew her best. While there is no easy answer as to why someone would take their own life, it is clear that mental health struggles can affect anyone regardless of age or circumstance. Yeah, man, it's true. It's hoped that through Miss Crawler's tragic passing, more attention will be brought to the importance of mental health awareness and resources. There you go. We got we got some info from Crawler with Giggle. And now what? <laughs> As we go look for more stuff. Please don't be standing behind me. Oh, okay, we're good. Maybe. What is that? Can you hear some shit? That sounds juicy. Again. Colton, it's me again. 
Listen, just stay quiet for a sec, okay? I need to tell you something. So, I did some digging online, and guess what? Mrs. Suzanne died some time ago. Three years to be exact. Isn't this crazy? I mean, why didn't we hear about it right when it happened? Why have you seen her this whole fucking time? Something is not right here. It's like someone wanted to sweep it under the rug or something. I'm it's sure they did. so bizarre. I need some time to process this, and you should probably see a shrink or something. Unless this is some damn ghost business. I'm done. Don't try to reach out. What the fuck? What is that? What the fuck was that? Okay, we'll look at the cameras, I think. What's going on here? Hello. Hmm. Wait. Oh, Papa's back. Papa's back. We got some more shit, dude. See the papa. In that contraption, uh, night after where night after night, ere we slipped into sleep, our gazes intertwined, beholding our cherished TV series, just you, me, and our badge car. What the fuck? What happened? Oh god. Use of authority? Oh my god, my game just started freaking out, dude. Did not like that. Use of authority. What do you want? Okay, that's fair. Be friendly. Is that a yes? Oh man. Um Where are you? Can you help me? Oh, Papa. Hmm. Here we go back to the cameras. See if it changes. Dancing on the cash, dude. <laughs> I respect that. Oh, whoa. She's like twitching all over the place, dude. She's tweaking right now. I see the Papa Man. I guess we go down here, huh? Guess we're going down to the living room.
Hi. She gonna fuck me up? What the fuck? She's kind of hanging out there. Fuck. Oh. Okay. Yeah, where'd she go? Papa's sleeping. Can you help me? Dead? You just ripped my throat out? What the fuck? Hello? Okay. I gotta be quiet. shared garments of the daily crime if only I could rewind time. Hmm, okay. So I can't run into her at all. <laughs> I need to stop doing that shit. Okay, so no more running into ghosty. I can apparently. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't talk at all. Whoa, that was cool though. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna shut the fuck up <laughs> and stay away. Fuck me.
got here, man. Oh, Papa's gone. Okay, Papa's gonna help. Papa always help. There we go. There we go. Where we gonna go. Too long crafting art with labor yet destroying us in the process. I didn't even fucking do anything. The fuck? Man, I didn't even speak of nothing. That's some bullshit. We have to find another picture. Papa, help. Now let's go. where we could have forged countless culinary memories.
overdue for $95,331. Please be advised that it is imperative to settle this outstanding payment as soon as possible to avoid any further complications. Your prompt attention to this matter is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions or concerns regarding your mortgage payment, please do not hesitate to contact our customer service department. Thank you for your cooperation. He wasn't lying about their financial situation. Here it is. You nurtured your flawless beauty, tenderly anointing your skin with fragrant elixirs, your own moistened hands. Is that the bathroom? Working it out, man. These are, um... These are all clues as to where the pieces of the, uh... Pieces of the picture are. I don't know why it took me so long to figure it out. My smooth brain struggles, but... Bathroom. Who's <laughs> 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 
Don't come at me. where it all landed and I wonder incessantly seeking you my love hmm where it all ended Trying to check Giggle. What the fuck? Oh my god, I'm so dumb. It's an N, not an M. Halton, not Haltum. Shit. Time to giggle again. There it is. Fucking finally, man. Oh, it took me my eyes so long. A hero shares bravery 40 years since the daring rescue in Pennsylvania. In the small town of Greenfield, Pennsylvania, nestled among the picturesque landscapes and rolling hills, there exists a story of extraordinary bravery that has become a beacon of hope and inspiration for the community. This narrative revolves around Sheriff Robert Holton, a man whose courage and selflessness came to define the spirit of heroism in the hearts of Greenfield residents. It was a chilly autumn night in 1982 when the local family was abruptly awakened by the piercing sound of a fire alarm. The source of the disturbance was their neighbor's house, now consumed by an inferno that threatened to devour everything in its path. The family, trapped inside, faced a dire situation with little hope for escape. In the midst of chaos, Sheriff Robert Holton, already renowned for his unwavering dedication to the community, received the distress call. Without a moment's hesitation, he rushed to the scene, not as an observer, but as a rescuer determined to defy the odds. Upon, upon arrival, Sheriff Holden was met with a scene of sheer terror. The flames roared uncontrollably, painting an orange glow against the darkened night sky. The family, immobilized by fear, were visibly through, were visible through the thick smoke, desperately signaling for help from an upper floor window. Undeterred by the intensity of the blaze, Sheriff Holden swiftly coordinated with the local fire department to create a strategy for a daring rescue. With the flames raging, oh uh, shit, with the flames raging around them, the sheriff and the firefighter worked tirelessly to breach the burning structure. 
As the first responder battled the inferno, Sheriff Holton, equipped with a protective suit, charged into the smoke-filled building, guarded only by the distinct cries of the family. He navigated through the treacherous environment with unparalleled determination. Finally reaching the upper floor, Sheriff Holton discovered the family huddled together in a room rapidly succumbing to the encroaching flames. The urgency of the situation amplified as he ushered them towards the window. The only possible exit. Amidst the chaos, Sheriff Holton maintained an air of calm and reassurance, urging the family to trust him as he orchestrated their descent to safety. One by one, he carefully lowered them down with the help of a makeshift rope, ensuring their escape from the clutches of the relentless fire. The heroic rescue concluded with the family safely reunited on the ground and Sheriff Holton emerged from the inferno unscathed but forever changed. The town of Greenfield hailed him as a true hero and the events of that fateful night solidified his place in the hearts of the community. Now, four decades later, the legacy of Sheriff Robert Holton continues to inspire generations. The heroism displayed on that autumn night has become a symbol of courage, unity, and resilience echoing through the quaint streets of Greenfield as a testament to the indomitable spirit of one extraordinary sheriff. So I'm guessing he's a fucking asshole. I'm guessing he's a cunt. <laughs> oh, here we go. She's been chilling in there for a while. Hey! What you doing in there? myself die that's fine uh okay hello hello well i'll be done what's going on here i'm detective white I'm for the night share of home conducting an investigation detective you said the one that probably what killed her this house making all this ruckus folks around here can't get a moment's peace my apologies sheriff i'm here on behalf of the new residents who requested an investigation into the disappearance of Mrs. Susan. And the he former did it. Occupant of this house. Mrs. Susan? Bless her soul. It was he. She him. passed away three years ago. Can't trust his mustache, Why man. Why would anyone be poking around her old place now? Well, Sheriff, sometimes these cases have a way of lingering. The new residents are concerned, and they just want some closure. Closure, huh? Well, I reckon that's understandable. But what's with all the noise? Ah, yes, I'm afraid my investigation can get a bit noisy at times. Just trying to leave no stone unturned, you know? Hmm, I suppose I understand. But if you don't mind me asking, why now? Why all this fuss over Mrs. Susan after all these years? It's my duty to follow up on any leads, Sheriff. Right He's now, like, Shit. my leads point me to this house. And you? Well, all right then. I'll leave you to it, Detective, but try to keep it down, will you? Don't need the whole town up in arms over some ghost story. Okay. Can you help me? Find the fuse there. Oh, now I gotta buy fuses? Fucking hell. Away something. There it is. Of these now.
there's a couple. Let's try this. Don't have yellow. Shit. Do what I can. few I don't have yet.
looking one We got it. Baby. Now what? Okay. Fucking time. Ooh. I won't let anyone escape. The fuck? Oh god. The fucking sheriff, dude. Where are you, son of a bitch? Headshot, shoot him in the dick. Oh, don't you go hide, darling. Cause I'll find you anyway. Motherfucker, man. Gotcha. Get him. Oh, here we got him. Well, um, I don't 
only took 20 <laughs> headshots and thousand shots of the dick to kill this man. Ah, oh, man. Okay. In a stunning revelation, Detective Wyatt unraveled the dark truth behind the tragic deaths of Miss Susan and her husband. The culprit was none other than the Reverend Sheriff Robert Holton, a man of authority and respect in the community. Jealousy had consumed him when Miss Susan chose another over him, leading him to commit a heinous act of vengeance. Motherfucker, man, knew it. You know, she was pretty obvious from the picture. Next. Sheriff Holton's manipulation of local news painted him as a hero. Disguising his own sinister deeds, he orchestrated the fire that engulfed Miss Susan's home while her family sat down to supper, ruthlessly ending their lives, but it wasn't enough. He went further, concocting a false narrative of heroism to cover his tracks. A oh, motherfucker. Miss Susan, far from taking her own life, as the fabricated report suggested, was found to have been pregnant when the coroner examined her body. Jeez, man. The extent of Sheriff Holton's depravity knew no bounds. That's fucked up. And in the face of such darkness, Detective Wyatt emerges a beacon of truth and justice. With unwavering determination, he pieced together the evidence, unmasking Sheriff Holton's vile actions and bringing him to justice. Yeah, he's fucking dead now. He's he, he done. When the police arrived at the scene, Wyatt stood amidst the tears, a hero in the midst of tragedy. Despite the pain and sorrow, his resolve remained unbroken, a testament to his commitment to seeking out the truth, no matter how dark or daunting the path may be. Cool. There you go, man. We did it. Okay. I enjoy that game. I thought the graphics and stuff were amazing. There were some cool little scares, creepy atmosphere. Um, the only thing that kind of like frustrated me was sometimes it wasn't super clear with what you had to do. Uh, and then, I don't know, I just kind of felt a little stuck, a little lost for a bit. But then once you figure it out, once you work it out and like, I don't know, like the, the sequence of events you have to do, like, you know, go to the cameras and then go to the dog and then go to the thing and then go look for the part, like the piece of the fucking, the photos. Like it kind of makes sense. It just takes a bit to figure out that loop initially. <laughs> but um, overall, I think that was a cool little spooky game, man. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking around at the end if you made it this far. If you did make it this far, if you could sub, like, send your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about it. And I'll see you in the next one, man.